Hey guys, this is Mr. Mac. We're going to talk about trig and some of the trig ratios that we're going to see on the geometry common core reagents uh, and some of the formulas you're going to deal with. So, the three formulas that you have to remember, they go by this acronym, which you could write down on your paper, which is SOCATOA. And basically what those mean, they refer to ratios in the right triangles, which refers to the sine of a degree value. So I'm going to call that sine of theta. That's going to be equal to a fraction that represents the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And then cosine, the middle one, and a lot of times I use the theta, it's just a Greek symbol, same thing like a variable like an x. That's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the last one, tangent. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So let's talk about how we're going to use those. But before you do that, going up to the directions, um, we got to make sure also they ask us to round to the nearest integer or nearest degree. So we're going to look at two questions. One's going to help us find a side value, which will be nearest integer. The other one's going to help us find a degree value. Um, the first thing I want you to do is we're going to start by labeling. So I just talked about in those fractions, you're going to see opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. And each of the fractions has two of those measurements. So what you're going to want to do with every triangle, I'm going to do the first one, and I want you to do the rest, and then call me over, let me check it, is we're going to label those based on those three values, those three, those three words. we got opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Now you can use O, A, and H also, which I'm going to do. So first thing you want to do, and I always do this first, is label hypotenuse. Look for the right angle, go opposite of it, and mark that side. Mark right in the middle of the side with that letter. Then you want to find the reference angle, which in this case is 50 degrees. Now the opposite refers to the opposite of that reference angle. So this right here, this side is going to be O, and then adjacent means next to, so that's going to be A. So what I want you to do is pause the video, take a couple minutes and go through and do the labeling on the rest of the questions, because you have to have the labeling right before you can decide which of the three to use. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to decide which of these three formulas to use. And in the case of this question, I noticed that I have measurements where I marked O and H. So now i got to decide which of these three. And because I used, or I marked the O and the H, I'm going to use sine because that one has O and H in the fraction. So how it gets set up is it's the sine of the degree, 50 degrees. That's going to equal the opposite, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which was 18. Now, I'm going to use my calculator to help me figure out that answer. And we're going to use a little cross-multiplying for it. And usually, my students are pretty good with cross-multiplying that I've come across. So, move that down a little bit and over. So I'm going to clear all this out. Now, we have sine of 50, and we're going to put that over 1. And we're going to cross multiply. So x over 1 would just be x. And then we have sine of 50 times 18. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're in degree mode. Now, my calculator right now is in radian. So you press the mode button, you go down, you put the cursor on degree, you hit enter, and then you can go to second mode to quit back to the screen. So now I do sine of 50. Make sure you close your parentheses around that 50, and then do times 18. So this is going to be my value for x. It says 13. I'll put the first couple. Let's say 0.79. Going back to the paper, it says nearest integer. So in this case, x will be 14. And like I talked about on the Pythagorean triples assignment, the hypotenuse should always be the biggest side. So in this case, this 14 does make sense based on the measurements that we have so far. 
Now, kind of moving on to three. Hopefully, you did three and already have it labeled, like I asked you to pause it earlier. Um, we got a. In this case, we got the hypotenuse, which would be down here. It's across from the right angle. I have a reference angle, which is x. So that means that the five is the opposite, and the eight is next to or adjacent that angle. So because of the, I erased the formulas, but up here I noticed that I have measurements for O and A, which means this one's going to be tangent. Same setup, but I'm using tangent instead. Tangent of X equals 5 over 8. Now we can't cross multiply this because we have to find that degree value, but what we are going to do to get rid of the tangent is every calculator has inverse functions for sine, cosine, and tangent. You can see them in blue over here. If you look at the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, you see up here in blue it'll say tangent negative 1, sine negative 1, cosine negative 1. So to get x by itself for this, kind of like a square and a square root, add addition and subtraction, you want to use that inverse. So we're going to have to do the inverse. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the inverse of this to cancel this out, kind of like we're distributing, we'll end up with x will equal the tangent inverse of 5 eighths. So that's what we're going to put in the calculator. You're going to do second tangent, and then you just put in that fraction, 5 over 8, and the answer we get is going to be a degree. So in this case, 32, it said nearest degree. I'll erase that and it's 0.00. 32 degrees is going to be our value for x. So x equals 32 degrees. So like I talked about already, just kind of summing this up, again, make sure that you go ahead and label those triangles first, and then you can pick which of these to use based on the two measurements you have. And then after you do that, just make sure when you plug it in the formula, you put everything in the right spot, and then decide, depending on what's missing, are you going to have to cross multiply like we did with question one? Or if you need an angle, are you going to have to do the inverse like we did for question three? So if you have any questions, please ask me in, cl in class. Otherwise, good luck.